you know, um, someone um, tweeted a bunch of different examples uh, of where dozens and dozens of accounts are saying the same inflammatory things with the exact same wordage. Exact. And they're all like, you know, they have numbers and letters right, in their accounts, right. like just random accounts. And, you know, you go to their page, it looks kind of real. They have a photo. There's like them with a flag. It's like, and you go through it, and you, but you get this sense like, oh, you're, you're a bot. Like you're not even a real person. Like, so you, you're an agent of, you're stirring up bullshit. So there's a certain aspect of our culture. I don't know what the percentage is, but there's a certain aspect of the conversations online that are being flavored by fake accounts that are designed to get people upset with each other. Yeah. It's like psychological warfare on a level that no one anticipated and no one's prepared for. Because when you have the two things we already discussed, like this adherence to the ideology no matter what, no matter what, like there's no, you can't objectively, logically defend any of the things that are in, in opposition of it. Yeah. And then you have this. So are you, I, I noticed, uh, I mean, obviously we follow each other on Twitter. You almost never, I mean, short of the recent thing you did with uh, Peter Hotez, you almost never weigh in on anything is has was that sort of a conscious thing for you to step back and... yeah well with that one it was like okay this is crazy you're you're yeah. you're you're saying that he he was he made some crazy tweet about neo-fascist leanings yeah, yeah, yeah i saw that like what are you talking yeah. about like with robert kennedy jr with me i'm like this is dangerous like what you're saying is totally untrue yeah. you know it's untrue and you're willing to just say it because it, it, like the the more you can discredit someone who's in opposition to some of your ideas the the more you can somehow or another in your weird game of checkers you're playing like elevate yourself but you don't think people know what you're doing like that's like the the most clear uh, neo fascist like what the fuck are you saying did you feel more angry at the fact that you had already had a conversation with him and so you there was some kind of personal connection between you two i mean i understand he's not your for best sure friend. i've had him on at least what, was he on twice twice, yeah. twice. i've had him on twice yeah. i was very nice to him yeah even in disagreement with him like in issues of health i was very nice to him yeah. but you can't just say stuff like that and you know it's like i just wanted to say like have a debate with the guy yeah like have a debate with the guy so what ended up happening i think it got up to like he's, two, two yeah, million he's dollars not, he's not gonna do it he okay. won't do it you know, yeah. I don't think he wants to do it. You know, and this, there's the idea that, like, Robert Kennedy would be too silver-tongued, like, oh, stop, come on, because he's a lawyer, you know, yeah, and he's right. really good at arguing stuff. Like, look, if you, if you either have facts or you don't have facts. Right. And if you're scared to debate the facts, I have to go, well, what are these facts? Right. Well, what's bothering you? Like, yeah. what do you worry that he might bring up? I mean, like, what it, are we saying? It, it could be the case. So, for example, I've been often asked, why don't you debate creationists right. about evolution? And I take the position there of Richard Dawkins, which is it's not that I'm too haughty to debate anyone, is that there's almost no chance that I could present any evidence that would cause you to alter your position. Yeah. So it's really a losing proposition. So could it be that Peter Hotez is coming from that perspective? It could, but you know what I would say to that? Even in your case, it is preposterous for someone to, to not believe that at least there's a process of evolution. At, at this stage of, right. of it's it's kind of crazy to because there's like there's evidence of things that are happening where things are adapting to their environment yeah. right now that we we've, we've tracked yeah exactly like you know there's a little antelope in the congo that swims underwater and eats fish is that right yeah it's called a diker i think it's called a diker d-i-k-e-r i think that's how you say it but this little animal evolved uh, lived on grasslands and the grasslands became the rainforest and when the grasslands these little like Prairie animals are yeah. trapped inside the Congo. There's an amazing BBC documentary about it. But yeah. they've got like these things are evolving. Yeah. Like they're figuring out how to swim. <laughs> but believe me, having spent 30 years trying to convince some of my academic colleagues about the value of evolution in studying human behavior, they'll go la la la. Right, I don't want right. to hear it. Right. With human behavior. Yeah. And especially with, you know, oh, there certain narratives. So this one is just swimming in the water, but these motherfuckers can go underwater. 
They can sw- the the dikers that they were talking about in the Congo. They can swim underwater for like a well, hundred yards. Why do I feel that the crocodile is about to hit it any second now? Because we've seen too many of those videos. <laughs> <laughs> that that is arguably one of the scariest <laughs> scenarios. Nat- yes, yeah, yeah. <gasps> the scariest, the yeah, fucking yeah. scariest. Sorry, to, I have to pause. Something happened with my video feed oh. right now. Oh, it's some doing sense so mixing your two things really strangely. I need a. Do we re- got a reboot? Not a reboot. I just got to figure out what happened. Oh, okay. But we got everything else? No, yeah. It's so. It's just, yeah, when I cut we'll to just... your camera, it's blending them together. In a so if way. people are only listening to audio, this is a special segment of the podcast. <laughs> it's only just for you. There you go. Because the video's fucked. Should we stop talking? I mean, you can keep talking. It's just that the video looks weird, so I don't want to be a distraction. All right. Well, let's fix it. <clears throat> we'll pause. We'll be right back. We're back. All right. Uh, Little can technical I, difficulties. I just want to close the parenthesis on something that happened from last show. Oh. Incredible story. You ready? Yeah. That actually speaks about connecting with people. So last show you had asked me, or not you had asked me, we were talking about who would be some guests that we'd really want to have on our respective shows. And you probably don't remember what my two celebrities were. Do you? I, by I, any don't, chance? I don't remember. Clint Eastwood. Mm. And... First, I appreciate his politics. I, I've been watching him since I was a kid in Lebanon. Uh, number two was Burt Bacharach, who's, I don't, do you remember who that is? Burt, I remember the name. Burt Bacharach is the uh, music composer who's basically written songs for everybody. Uh, he was featured in one of the Austin Powers movie oh. where he, the guy says, ladies and gentlemen, Burt Bacharach. You know, anyways, uh, after our chat aired, I go on my Instagram, I have a personal DM, private DM, from what looks like the account of Bert Bacharach, who's, you know, arguably the biggest musical, you know, composer in the United States. So I'm extremely excited. It turns out it was his son who said, oh, your your clip with Joe Rogan uh, was passed on to me, uh, and I I think I would. It would be great for. I'd love for my dad to come on your show. Oh. And now, cut to the punchline. It never ended up happening. He recently passed away, so perhaps he wasn't. I mean, he was like ninety four, ninety five. But just the fact that you and I are having a conversation, someone else picks it up, and then my word can my world can intersect with Bert Bacharach, whom there is no conceivable place where his word and her world and mine would ever connect. That's the beauty of life. Wow, that is the beauty of life. That's awesome. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You are a connector, sir. I try to be. Clint Eastwood would be an interesting guy to talk to. Like, the guy still works. You know, he's like 93 years old. He's still out there making movies. Yeah. Well, he still I, enjoys 